What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to this four going. Today, we're going to talk about the patch notes that were just recently released. And I got to tell you, just from the brief skim that I did over it, I'm not really, I'm, I'm kind of like, mm, you know, like it's not really, I don't know, it's not as impressive as what I was hoping to see. But again, you know, when it comes to patch notes, you're just judging on text, right? You're not judging on actual characters doing a certain amount of hits, the way they play, if they cancel their skills, and all these things that come into play as far as how well characters are actually going to be. And this update definitely is I think maybe gonna have a pretty decent impact as far as the new artifact system that's being implemented. So let's read on, let's see what we got here. So in the patch, we got, you know, three new uniforms, obviously that we know about, you know, with Wolverine, Captain America and Hyperion, which is pretty awesome. Something we're all excited about. They're introducing the artifact system that can enhance instinct abilities and boost obelisk and boost comic cards, which I mean, could be an OP thing, could be a power creep thing, but we're really gonna have to wait and see until we get the actual update. I mean, sometimes you're just not sure from just reading things. And then we got the new, you know, make use of the Phoenix Force and Instinct to take part in the new timeline survival threat levels. I gotta tell you already that this is something that I really am not excited for at all because once it just looks like another, it's just gonna be auto gameplay, which is boring. I'm not really into it. Some of you might be into it, and that's pretty cool. So then we get down to the uniforms and we got Captain America. So Captain America's uniform effect, you know, gives him an increase of all basic attack by 20%. That's really good. The fire damage increase are nice, you know, being a Phoenix character now. And then, you know, he's got the immunity to all damage by three seconds. Increase all basic attack by 20%. I mean, you know, this is all fine and dandy. Okay. And then we get the ultimate skill. And this is where I get very, very disappointed. Tapping and holding the skill icon will charge the skill and releasing it will commence the attack. frick okay so he's still gonna have that damn annoying tier three which sucks but and he has no invincibility on the damn thing so you're still gonna have to get your invincibility before you play what this means is probably he's not gonna be very proc friendly at all more than likely he's gonna be raged but but a big benefit to this uniform is the fact that now he can actually use a ctp of judgment so i think the fact that he's gonna be able to put a ctp judgment on him because he's doing fire damage that's going to make a big difference because you can actually get chain hit damage from the CTB of Judgment on top of the extra all attack. So I guess when you look at it from that perspective, it might be pretty awesome. So, I mean, I, I was just thinking about that, like, oh, well, yeah, you know, and now he's going to have fire. So, yeah, I mean, he might. I mean, I still hate this stupid tier three. I can't stand this damn thing, but it is what it is. And it's still damage accumulation based on damage you take. So it's the same old crap. And then the passive, okay, whatever, tier two passive. I mean, I'm sure I'll probably skip over some. Uh, increase all basic defense by 40%. Okay, skill damage by 40%, all right. And skill one, okay, he has three second immunity. Yeah, all right, same old, same old. And then he gets, uh, I mean, okay. Paralysis that applies to world boss. That's, I mean, it's good for regular world boss. And then the four skill, he does have a all defense down, which he's always had. Only goes up to 30%, <clears throat> not very high. And then he has a nice heal on the fifth skill, which is pretty cool. And then he's got 35% increase of basic attack. Uh, let me look at something. 35% increase of basic attack. What's he got right now? He has, uh, let me take a look here on his fifth skill. He's got 25. So they gave him an extra 10%. I mean, it, it's it's something, I guess. I mean, it's, it's not terrible. It's, it's something. Then we get to Wolverine, the mad dog. Still a combat. And his uniform effect, change effective skill, regeneration healing factor. And so now he's going to have the increased chain hit damage by 15% when attacking. And as far as I know, if I take a look at Wolverine right here, I don't think he, he doesn't have any chain hit damage in his kit right now at all. No, 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 he doesn't. So that's actually pretty awesome. And just like Captain America, because this is a Phoenix Force uniform, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to use a CTP of Judgment and have that chain hit damage stack on top of the other chain hit damage from the CTP of Judgment. Which could be pretty awesome. I mean, it could be, it could be really good. It could be really good. And then he has uh, activation rate when HP is below 9, 30%. Wow, he gets 100% recovery of max HP. Okay, so that's definitely going to increase his survivability for PvP. Obviously, that's really where people are going to look at this. You know, they'll be like, yeah, yeah. But, but really for PvP, it does get better for old Wolvie. And then his ultimate skill. Now, what they've done for the ultimate skill, it still has the damage accumulation based on the damage he deals. Uh, he's got immunity, but he doesn't have invincibility on this, which is trash. That means he can get, you know, thrown back by Null sometimes. That's, that's going to suck, man. And uh, 
But it does, but his accumulation does last 10 seconds, whereas in his past uniform, his accumulation only lasts for six seconds, I believe. Yes, yeah, six seconds. So you're going to get an extra four seconds of accumulation, which means you're going to be able to go into your skills afterwards, still have that accumulation up, and do a lot more damage. So that's actually really good. I'm actually, that's that that's a good. I'm glad they extended the accumulation on the tier three, but it just sucks. He doesn't have invincibility. Man, he's going to get thrown back against Null. That's going to suck. And then his passive, he has a ignore defense. Why in the hell do they do this ignore defense crap? And then activation rate when HP is below 99% applies to sell 6% recovery of max HP. 6%? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 6%? Uh, I don't think it's that high right now. It's 5%. So they gave him a better heal on top of the 100% heal when he gets down to 30% HP. Wow. Ooh, we've seen a lot more survivability, which is great. That's, I mean, that's the way it should be for Wolverine. He should be pretty much immortal. He shouldn't even die. And then he's got the same old, same old here. The one skill. Okay, whatever. Fire damage. Yeah, man. CTP of Judgment. CTP of Judgment. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Seriously, man, that, that could make a big difference. The fact that he could use that obelisk, that could make a big difference, especially in World Boss Legend. And then his third skill has Ignore Iframe. I don't think his third skill had Ignore Iframe before. No, it didn't. So, PvP, guys. I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm not saying he's going to be completely for PvP. There's definitely things in this kit that make you think he's going to be good for PvE as well. It's just, I mean, when you see Ignore Iframe, you think, okay, yeah, I mean, it's PvP. You're seeing better heals. I mean, yeah. And then you got additional burn damage here. And then he has uh, penetrate everything on his third skill. I don't think he had that either. No. So they get they gave him a full penetration on his third skill. Wow. So again, that's that's PvP oriented stuff. He has a two second immunity on it. This counter is going to be tough. He has a damage proc for two attacks. And the good thing about this is you can actually hit the third skill. And since it's for two attacks, go into your, your proc skill, which is probably your fifth skill, and get that damage proc on your on your fifth skill with your other proc at the same time. That's pretty cool. And then he has an increase all base tab by 50%. That is dope, that is dope, that is sick. That is sick. Now that's actually really, really good. So I actually missed that the first time I skimmed over this. That's actually really good. 50% increase of all attack. That is nice, that is nice. And that lasts for eight seconds. And then his fourth skill gives him, okay, he still has to ignore target dodge and that does stack up. Pretty sure it's gonna stack up with the new uniform, which is really great. For Null, and then his fifth skill gives him penetration again for everything. I don't think he had penetration before in his fifth skill. Let me look. No, he didn't. Holy crap. He did have a 15% damage buff on it, and now he's got a 30% damage buff. So he's got an extra 50% here. He's getting an extra 15% here compared to his previous uniform. I mean, that, that's pretty substantial buffs. It really is. And again, the fact that he's going to have chain hit damage and you can use the CTP of Judgment with this character. I mean, I mean, you're seeing fire damage and physical attack. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that Wolverine could be, he could be pretty awesome. He could be pretty awesome. And then we have Hyperion and Hyperion gets an insane leadership buff. I mean, he's going from 45% to 55%. Let's back up a little there. Which is awesome. It's make it, going to make him an amazing leadership for all allies, whether they're villains or heroes. So it's going to be a universal leadership, no pun intended. And then his passive, 50% uh, recovery of max HP. Very nice. His tier 2 passive, 6% chance to penetrate everything. That's a pretty high percentage rate to penetrate, which is nice. He has native super armor. Then his one skill has ignore iframe on a 3 second cooldown. PvP? Wow. Two skill has a paralysis that works in World Boss. Third skill has a nice 20% recovery of heal, which he already has on his third skill currently. But he is getting a 20% attack buff. I think on his third skill he got an uh, attack buff before. No, he didn't. They gave him that attack buff. So, hell yeah. Extra 20% attack buff and that crit rate. That's nice to see. And it's only on a 7 second cooldown. So, pretty much going to keep that up most of the time. And then the fourth skill has a 3 second immunity... And then he has a nice all attack buff on his four skill. And I don't think he, no, he didn't. So he's getting 30% attack buff here. He's getting 20% attack buff from third skill, which he didn't have before. That's 50% extra attack. Very nice. And then his fifth skill gives him another 15% all attack. Wow. And his fifth skill before did give him a buff, I believe. Yeah, I gave him 15%. So they didn't change that at all. And it's still a damage accumulation based on how much damage you take. 
which is, uh, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But I mean, but notice his cooldowns are so much better, right? I mean, this is eight seconds. This is seven and a half. That's way better than what it was right now. I mean, what it is right now, I mean, if you take a look at this guy, his cooldowns, I mean, look at his cooldown, man. This is 12 and a half seconds long. 12 and a half seconds, and they are changing that sucker to seven and a half seconds. That's going to make a big difference in his damage. The fact that you're going to be able to bring up this accumulation more often throughout the fight means that he's going to he's going to do more damage. It's going to be awesome. And then his tier three, I just don't like the accumulation based on the damage you take, but we'll see. And then his... Oh yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does he get invincibility on it? Yeah, he gets three seconds of invincibility, but if that invincibility wears off while you're charging, he will get knocked back by Null, which kind of sucks. And then his tier three does have all defense sound. It goes up to 60%, start up at 10. It's only for five seconds, but during the tier three, he's going to do probably a good amount of damage with that all defense down. Again, it doesn't work in World Boss Legends, so it's kind of like good for some players, not good for others. Other players won't give a crap. 40% ignore defense. All right. Give us that ignore defense. That's awesome. Especially with crafting cards now. I bet that's hard to level up. Ha <laughs> ha. Not. And then we have a 100% chance of immunity all damage for seven seconds. Oh, nice. You got, oh, increase all basic damage by 50%. Ah, it's just a damage buff for one attack. I was hoping it was an all attack for like 10 second buff or something, but still pretty good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then you see his tier three. And as always, I don't want to enlarge it because it's just going to be blurry as hell. He jumps up. He shoots beam from his eyes and he comes down. Typical of what we've seen before with a lot of other characters, in all fairness. I mean, it's really nothing special, but okay. And then we have artifact gear to amplify instinct. Equip a new gear artifact to your heroes to amplify the power of four instincts. Artifacts are a new type of gear that can be obtained from the story mode, which is great. Everybody can get them. Time on survival, everybody can get them. And the store, which is nice. Artifacts can be equipped from level one. So evidently you're going to be able to level them up. You know, you have different levels to them. And then you got story mode and you can get these here. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Timeline survival, you can get them from, you can get these here. Okay, so you can get one to three star level from timeline survival. So that's going to make timeline survival more than likely more relevant, which I mean, anytime you have a new game mode, that's a good thing. It, it really is. It's a good thing. Even if the game mode sucks. It's still a good thing, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see how relevant old timeline survival is going to be and how relevant these artifacts are actually going to be when it regards your instincts. How much of a power increase is it really? And then you got store purchases. Obviously, you can purchase with crystals. Yay! Not going to do that. And then we have store purchase. Unless, unless I really doubt. I mean, we'll see what kind of buff it's going to be. I mean, I don't know. And then we have store purchase. But, you know, I guess my thing with the uh, instinct thing is, do we need it? Really, it's just another way for Netmarvel to do some monetization, try to make a little cash. We all know that's really the, I mean, that's that's what's behind all of this. And it's, you know, we expect it. It's a mobile game. They got to they gotta make money, but I don't know. I don't know. It makes you kind of wonder if they're making much money from anything else in the game. Uh, but let's see here. The type of rewards and the number may differ based on the threat level for time on survival. So the more of a threat, the more rewards you should get. And that's the way it should be. So I'm actually happy to see that. That's actually nice. You got one, two, and three star artifacts. Okay. And then we get down here and we get to see these buffs. So, you know, this here, like it says, increase instant critical damage decreases by 4%. I mean, you can look at the buffs here, critical defenses. I mean, decrease pierce damage. I mean, I guess this would be really good for like PVP, maybe whenever pierce wouldn't be in effect, I guess. And then uh, increase instinct critical damage. I mean, the thing about increasing critical damage and critical rates, if they don't go over the cap, like 75% for crit rate and 200% for critical damage, if these instincts don't go over the cap, which I'm not really sure if they do or not. I don't I don't think they do. I don't know if they do or not. Um, I really, I can't tell right now. But if they don't go over the cap, then this is going to be irrelevant. And no one's going to care because most people are going to be able to max out their stats with their cards. With crafting cards, it's pretty easy. So unless it's an added stat, like some of these, like the decreased pierce damage, I mean, that's definitely something that could be helpful, but I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Then random substance amplifies one option among justice, cruelty, order, and destruction, which are the instincts. And then random substance applies specific effects related to the instinct. Okay. I mean, really until we get this stuff and until we see how all this actually plays, I mean, 
you see here that we have a better heal so that's actually really good it's actually pretty op but the critical defenses and the decreased pierce damage and the I'm just not really sure how that's work. You know, I mean, is the instinct critical damage going to be over the cap of our regular critical damage? Is it going to put it above 200%? I would think so. Otherwise, it again, it'd just be irrelevant. So I'm not really sure. An artifact can be enhanced up to level 20. All right, we got 20 levels. We can take it up. That way they can really work on that monetization. Ah, oh, Net Marvel, you sneaky little shits. And there is a maximum enhanced chance. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, not bad, not bad. We got the RNG enhancing going on. Good job, Net Marvel. Good one. Very sneaky, you peckers. And then we we always love RNG. And then four, Celestial Essence can be obtained by dismantling artifacts or through timeline survival. Okay, dismantling artifacts costs gold. That's actually a good thing because some of us do have an abundance of gold. For some players, that obviously won't be a good thing. An artifact that is equipped to a hero can be dismantled and requires crystals to be unequipped. Oh, not bad. Just like we have with our obelisk, right? Unequipping obelisk, not bad. So whenever a character, like whenever we get a new character, a new meta, oh, you're going to be switching around all this crap. More than likely, right? You're going to be switching around this. So, you know, like, you know, right now, a lot of times, like say you're playing ABX on a character and you want to take that rage off that character and put it on another character. Well, now they've added a little extra something we would do the same thing with. Nice, stand by wall. Good job. <laughs> you peckers. I hate that. Okay, whatever. Uh, equipping a new artifact when one is already equipped will destroy the previously equipped one. So that's the same as our Uru's. However, the enhanced level of equipped artifact may be transferred to the new artifact. Okay, so like whenever we like, uh, like in the game right now, whenever we have like a... Uh, Amplified Urus. What, well, let me go to somebody that has Amplified Urus. Like, whenever they have these Amplified Urus, that's actually going to stay. So, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be similar to this kind of this kind of situation where you're going to have a slot that's already amplified and then you put the artifact in there. Okay, okay. You're going to delete the artifact whenever you put a new one out in, but you'll still have the, the enhancement level of it. Okay, okay. That's the way that I read it anyways. And then we have enhanced level of transfer condition. The enhanced level of the new artifact must be lower than the previously equipped artifact. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. If the old and new artifacts are different types, the artifact's enhanced level may become lower. So you want to make sure whenever you're enhancing these things to have them of the same type. Because if they're not the same type, you could get screwed unless you have a stat that you don't want. The adjusted enhanced chance will be reset when changing the enhanced level through transfer. And, you know, upgrade your custom your custom cards conveniently, convert unnecessary items for more inventory space. Well, that's actually a good thing. Common card custom gear growth, material items, blah, 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 blah. Growth material items can be obtained in the inventory by converting custom gear. Common card ISOs. All right. Materials are divided into six grades. Okay, so you convert all of them. All right. And you got this new item right here for the conversion. Gold materials can be used as combined or enhanced materials, and extreme gray materials can be used to change CTP options or to enhance craft and change options. It could be good. I mean, it, it could be. I mean, we'll we'll see. We'll see. See how difficult it is to get these things. And then timeline survival, new threat levels and improvements. And then we have new timeline level threat levels of four to six have been added. I mean. I, Timeline survival, I mean, honestly, it's just going to be the same old crap, man. Just boring autoplay. I mean, maybe we can just do it and get through it since we're adding some temporal energy. And then you guys can take a look at all this. I'm not going to go into all that. I mean, it's the same old crap here. Uh, you know, the maximum temporal energy has been increased to 10. Thank you for that. And the recovery, repair, and the recovery period has been reduced to 15 minutes which is much better than one hour. That was absolutely ridiculous. And then the appearance rate of debuff lists have been reduced so that useful effects can appear more frequently upon entering lowercase trick. Okay. New season of future pass. And then you guys can take a look here. If you want the new icon for white Fox or you want the new icon for venom, which looks pretty dope. Yeah. Spend a little cashola. Okay. And then ah, we don't care about that crap. We don't care about uniform bullshit. It's doesn't even matter. And then they've done some other things here where the effects of Phoenix Force have been improved. 
Uh, before it was just energy attack, now it's all attack, which is pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. Good to know that. Active skill 2 of Crescent Light Serious Armor has been improved to apply silence effect when counterattack has been activated. Uh, I guess that's going to make her better for ABX. And then Crescent's ultimate skill. Oh, thank you so much. And Crescent's ultimate skill has been improved to activate ignore targeting. So, could be better for PvP because of that. Immunity to all debuffs and guard break immune effects upon using the skill. All right. Okay. The text will now, it's not going to make me want a tier three, but maybe some of you out there, maybe, you know, you'll be a little bit happier with your purchase. Uh, the text will now be displayed as yellow when dodging attacks with instinct during battle. Oh, that's something to look out for. And then CTP reforging still effect has been improved to reduce instinct damage as well. I'm not going to read all this other stuff. It seems like overwhelmingly positive. Most people don't seem to be too upset about it. Honestly, until we get all this artifact and instinct crap, well, we already have instinct in the game. But until we get artifact and see how it plays out, how many reward resources we're going to need to level up these artifacts, you know, how much farming does it actually require? There's a lot of things that come into play as to weighing out how good or how bad it actually is. Is, is it even really going to be worth it? I mean, we'll see. When it comes to the characters, I see potential. I see potential for them. I definitely see PvP potential for Hyperion and Wolverine for sure. Uh, I see that, I mean, and really I think that all three of them, I mean, I do feel that they're going to be a lot stronger. The fact that I know that every one of these characters can use CTP of Judgment, and just because a character can use a CTP of Judgment, doesn't mean they're going to be good. It doesn't mean they're going to be good. It's just, it's a nice added bonus knowing it, right? It's just a nice added bonus knowing that we can add more chain hand damage, especially for a character like Wolverine, who's already getting chain hand damage, but... I mean, I am disappointed that Captain America is still going to have the same old crappy ass tier three. I'm not happy about that at all. But I mean, he still could be way stronger. He still could be way stronger. And these other characters could still be really good for PvP and maybe even PvE. I reserve my judgment until we actually get the update. So let me know how you're all feeling about these patch notes. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GNT plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See ya.